You were listening to ChartingWealth.com for Friday the 10th of November 2017. Where do we always start? That's with the S&P 500. What do we see going on today? Down 0.36%. Next, the Qs. That's the NASDAQ 100 down 0.52%. Likewise, TLT, 20-year bonds are also down, and finally, gold up 0.41%. Let's jump first into the S&P 500. This is one of the first down days we've seen this week. I believe it's the only down day so far in the week. We have continued up movement on our weekly chart, but as we look at the price percent oscillator, it's going quite flat right now. Derivative oscillator has lost some energy over the course of the week started off a little slower than the prior weeks. Actually, the the bottom of the candle has dropped below the trend line. Movement, however, is above the weekly trend line. As we look at the two-day chart, what do we see? We see it appears to be getting very close to crossing over, going down. Of course, we just closed out the latest candle, which is a red spinning top, almost a doji. What does that mean in our Heikinashi candlesticks? As in any candlestick, it means a lot of indecision. Price movement still above the two-day and the weekly, but we do have some definite indecision there tending down due to the red that we see and the close proximity of a crossover on the two-day chart. Remember, any downturn in the market has to, of course, be preceded by a downturn in the two-day, which can end up leading to a downturn in the weekly. Still a ways from that. What do we see on the derivative oscillator? It also is losing energy, still positive, but is losing energy. What about the four-hour chart? Well, it crossed over going down in the morning. (coughs) We had been talking about that as things had slid sideways over about a a two-and-a-half-day period. Finally, we saw some significant down move in the morning, even more in the afternoon with a bit of a recovery, a long tail on that last red down candle derivative oscillator. Gained a lot of downward momentum. However, things did pair off after that morning down. The afternoon not down as much as far as dragging a super steep angle on the price percent oscillator. That's where we are on the four-hour chart. Prices, again, did not close below the two-day, getting pretty darn close to it. As we warned you, If you've already done well in the S&P 500 after a weekly vertical crossover going all the way back to right there at the end of Friday, the end of September, the 29th of September, of course, you have done well, Padawan. If you've stayed in that long, you've done quite well. And again, just keep an eye on things because we could have a crossover going down that might pull you out. As we saw back on the 24th, I'm sorry, we have had a crossover going down on the 4th, but if on the 24th of October we saw the same thing happen, and again, if it does drop down and drops back over going up, you can, of course, always make a decision to get back in. But again, just pay attention. We are very long in the tooth on all this up movement on the S&P 500, but again, we're in the fat time of the year. So we're always happy with that when we enter the fall-winter trading zone. Next, we go to the Qs, down 0.52%. Of course, we had a weekly vertical crossover on the Qs for the week ending the 27th of October. And, of course, we're in the third week of significant up movement above the Bollinger Band strongly for the last two weeks. Derivative oscillator still heading up strongly and the price percent oscillator still up nicely. So we look a little closer at that two-day chart. Pairing off, not as strong an up movement with this latest down candle. Again, it's a red open box. So again, it's not a red closed box, not nearly as strong the down movement we saw back on the 27th, uh, 26th of October. And again, this is a two-day candle that just ended, but it is a red down movement piercing through the two-day trend line. So again, derivative oscillator continuing to gain energy. PPO, price percent oscillator weekly move, price movement still strongly above the weekly trend line. What do you see on the four-hour chart? Crossed over in the morning, going down, which of course in the afternoon is where you could have pulled the trigger to jump out if you so if you saw so fit. Now remember, haven't pierced the two-day trend line yet on that four-hour chart, so you still have reasons to possibly keep in. If we pierce that 
and start really moving strongly down toward the weekly, then of course you should have been out way before then. But if you're holding on, hoping things are going to rotate over, it's going to be tough because that derivative oscillator is already flipped over. Don't have this still the strong, strong down movement in the morning. Paired off a little in the afternoon, but be concerned if you've stayed in. Come up with a good reason as to why you're staying in instead of getting out and taking your profit after that weekly vertical crossover going up. Okay, let's go back to the weekly chart. We move on to TLT. I'm trying to keep this under 10 minutes, my friends. I'm actually timing myself. You know, I can get a little bit long-winded, but I know you guys do like it, but I like to stick to the 10 minutes or less. Okay, what do we see going on on TLT? Of course, we are in currently a weekly down move since the weekly vertical crossover going down back on the 29th of September. Things went down for a week, sideways for two weeks, down another week, and for the last going on two weeks now, we have seen up movement, particularly in the last week, strong up movement, blowing out the weekly and, and reversing the two-day trend line. The weekly still in a confirmed down move, but appears to be headed toward a crossover. Don't know that that's going to happen on Friday, so we're not predicting a weekly vertical crossover yet. <coughs> we do see on the two-day chart, the two-day crossed over going up back on the 3rd of November. And of course, this latest is a bit of a pullback on this latest two-day candle. A red open box with a wick on top, no wick on the bottom. So again, not a super strong down movement there. Derivative oscillator is continuing to gain energy and the price percent oscillator isn't headed down, but not up as strongly on the four-hour chart. Seem to be getting close to a crossover going down, but it paired off in the afternoon. If it would have kept going at the angle it started off in the morning, it would have probably crossed over. It pulled up a little bit and closed above the two-day trend line. So again, keep your eye on things. Even if the four-hour chart starts zooming back up, we still have the weekly crossover going down to deal with, so we don't have a trade yet. We've got to see the two-day either rotate over going down, matching the four-hour or the weekly, rotate over going up, matching the two-day. Remember, we have to have the long and the middle, that is the long-term trend, which is the weekly, the middle-term trend, which is the two-day, and the four-hour trend moving in the same direction. We don't have that. So we've got a little schizophrenia going on, so there is no trade on TLT right now. Lastly, we're looking at gold. What is gold doing? Well, gold is up 0.41%. Let's, before we get to the four-hour, let's go to the weekly. The weekly is in a confirmed down move still, although it's flattening off on the price percent oscillator, derivative oscillator losing downward momentum. Gold's basically bottomed out somewhere around the 120 to 120.50 range, sliding sideways. The last three two-day candles, this latest candle actually is a green spinning top, meaning indecision, but tending to be in an up move. The derivative oscillator still way negative, the price percent oscillator still pretty strongly negative. What do we see going on on the two-day chart? It's getting close to crossing over, going up. Things flattened out in gold and appear to be moving up on this latest two-day candle. Rather a nice, decent-sized candle after a sideways slide. And we told you, aren't the Heikinashi candlesticks amazing? They've been telling us that it was tending to be an up move because they've been green spinning tops. Again, indecision tending up. We saw it happen over the course of the latest two-day candle, getting close to crossing over, going up. But again, we'll have that same schizophrenia. If that does happen, it won't be a trade. <coughs> Unless, of course, you rely solely on our four-hour chart, which is beautiful. It works over and over again in gold. Looked like it might fail you when gold started pairing off around the third, but then popped back up on the sixth digested those gains on the 7th, and then on the 8th and 9th, just kept soaring. Gold from the jumping in point after the crossover would have gotten in somewhere, oh gosh, around the 121.50 mark, and gone all the way up to 122.86, 122.41, so about a dollar in the last few days if you would have picked the worst entry point to jump in. So again, not bad, I mean, with, with gold trending that way. Now remember, the reason we look at the weekly and the two-day 
is when gold is moving in the direction of those larger charts, all things being equal, the market tends to move in the direction of the largest chart. But for some reason, this gold chart is just so beautiful in that that four-hour chart works beautifully over and over again. Folks, That we're out of time. We're at the 10-minute, 20-second mark. Thank you for your patience with me. Hope you're filling out those daily market worksheets, weekly market worksheets. We have Chapter 5 written. We're going to record it probably tomorrow morning. Get it out to you over the weekend. I am guessing you have to be a subscriber in order to receive it. How do you subscribe? Go to chartingwealth.com. Sign up. Put in your name, your email address. We'll put you on that mailing list for free. You'll get all the goodies, including the email every day that includes the weekly market worksheet PDF, the daily market worksheet, the trade worksheet, the how to read a stock chart video, and the layout that we use at freestockcharts.com. God bless my friends from the entire team here at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.